The world changed for one family on July 1st of this year, the day 32-year-old Kate Steinle was murdered in San Francisco by an illegal immigrant, a low level of life who had been deported five times but still managed to sneak back into this country and take advantage of a system that fails to punish them. The world also changed when that story struck a chord across the nation. Family members of other victims who were killed in the same manner found their voice and are determined to change this mistake in the American immigration system. Let us first welcome the child of an immigrant father who came to this country and legally became a citizen, and a third-generation Texas mom who never let her kids forget what hard work gets you. Now she is national director of the Remembrance Project, giving voice to those who feel so helpless in such cases, Maria Espinoza. And we're joined by the mother of Dominic Durden, a 30-year-old man who was killed when an illegal immigrant, one who also was previously deported with a record of armed robbery, crashed into Dominic's motorcycle and killed him instantly in 2012. Welcome, Sabina Durden. Ladies, I want to thank you both for joining us. And Maria, I'm going to start off with, I think, what has to be a question that everybody wants to know in a situation like this. Why are we still here talking about this when we have illegals who are crossing the border and are criminals that are killing our people. Hello, Ed, you're absolutely right. Nothing is being done. There has been talk, and not until Mr. Trump brought this to the attention of the American public has it really gained any traction. But yes, these are all preventable deaths, and no one is safe from illegal alien crime and killings. Then who is at fault? Is it as simple to say as this is the president's fault? This is Congress's fault. This is a mayor's fault. Somebody, anybody. Maria, who's at fault here? I think a, a, a bit of everyone, um, Ed. You know, we look at the media. They have not been telling the truth to the public. So therefore, they cannot um, press their legislators. And yes, DHS is and the president is absolutely at fault. I met with the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson last May, asking him to secure our homeland and protect our families. And that fell upon deaf ears. Sabina, you wrote a letter to the President of the United States. You said, and I quote, when do legal citizens that have been affected by this immigration issue get a chance to share their, sti their side of the story with you? Have you ever heard back from the White House? No, not ever. He's, he's talking to illegals, he invites them into the White House, he honors them, and um, we don't hear from him. We, we are left out and, and suffer, suffering the most. And I'm a legal immigrant, so I would definitely love to share the story with him, but he just, yeah, he has another agenda. What's he, not... Sabina, what's he afraid of? I think he's afraid of looking into uh, his mother's eyes because I, I would have him in tears in no time because I would have him feel exactly what I get to feel every day. The emptiness, the, the, the sadness, the pain. It's, it's indescribable. And just to share that with him and what he could do about it so no other family has to feel that. The one thing I think that is lost in a lot of the conversation, Sabina, is you, like many others, are for immigration. You are Absolutely. for a responsible way of coming to this country and sharing the dream of what is America. Then why is it that so many people on the left, when they hear this, they hammer away and say, it's people like you that don't want immigrants coming into this country. Why do they say that? Why do they come after you? I think they just, they just want to find a reason to, to push their agenda. And everybody really with the half a brain knows that you have to abide by the laws. I did. It took me a couple of years to become a citizen, but I did it and I had to do it. That's my duty by living here and applying the laws and, and living by the laws. And then to have your only child and my best friend murdered by an illegal who absolutely disregarded our laws, but then was protected by the same laws when we went into a hearing. He enjoyed all the laws working for him, but they worked against us. Maria, I've only got about a minute left here, but what Sabina just said here, anyone with half a brain, that strikes me right there, because it has to tell us that anybody with even a small amount of logic can tell we're not talking about everybody, we're talking about a criminal element that is allowed to fester in this country. Yes, Ed, and look, at we're asking for the very basics. Uphold current laws, follow the U.S. Constitution, enforce our borders. That's all American families want. You know, my father also immigrated from Mexico the right way. Um, and, and thus, here we are, a Latina. We also have an initiative called America First Latinos, where we're gathering Latinos to go ahead and speak out. Um, our website is the remembranceproject.org. 
we encourage our listeners to go on and join us and help give our families a voice. Sabina, I only got about 20 seconds left. Would you like to look the president in the eye and say, I miss my son, Mr. Obama? Mr. Obama, right here next to me, those are my son's ashes. That is all I have left of my family. So my family cannot, we don't have a choice to stay together. Please, Mr. Obama, start helping us. Start protecting our citizens. I don't want another family to feel this pain and have their, their kids' ashes in their living room. It is a plea that the president and other people have to start listening to, and they need to start now. The website, again, is therememberanceproject.org. Maria Espinoza, Sabina Durden, ladies, I want to thank you both for joining us. We will thank stay you. on this story, I promise thank you. you. Stay with you. us. The political animal is next on The Hardline. <laughs>